I'm Dayo Oyelude in Washington, D.C. with a special report. Critics of America's policy in Vietnam have recently been described by President Nixon as a vocal minority of the nation's population. In contrast, Mr. Nixon said in his November 3rd address, those supporting him comprised the silent majority. We want to look into that term, the silent majority, a label that has brought world attention to those Americans who are not so demonstrative. Recently in Washington, D.C., there was a demonstration against America's policy in Vietnam. Not all come to protest, some come to promote a cause, but no matter how worthwhile or meaningless, the issue or how popular or unpopular, how sound or foolish, the cause, demonstrations are part of the American tradition. According to many people, including President Nixon, this demonstration does not reflect the views of America's 200 million people. On the contrary, some observers say these demonstrators speak only for a minority, while the silent majority supports American policy in Vietnam. But how can President Nixon tell that these people support him? How does he know that they make up a majority? How can anyone tell what so many different people are thinking? George Gallup is president of the Gallup Poll Organization. Today we'd like to question him about one of his most recent polls. Mr. Gallup, on November 3rd, President Nixon spoke to the people of the United States about his policy in Vietnam. He mentioned a silent majority of Americans who he felt supported his position. What did your organization do following that speech? Well, immediately following the speech, we had a, a squad of well-trained telephone interviewers contact 500 people across the country. And then the results uh, came in the same night, of course, and we uh, collected them the next day and wired the results off to our newspapers at 1 o'clock on Tuesday. Will you give us the results? Well, we found, first of all, a large majority of the American people supported the president's policies as set forth in his speech found that a large majority of the public favored the president's program for troop withdrawals. Uh, but we found that the people rather divided <clears throat> on the question of whether these policies would bring a peaceful settlement to the war. Um, a further question found that by the ratio of six to one, the public thinks that uh, moratoriums and demonstrations do more harm than good in terms of uh, the attainment of peace. So if there is a majority, what is the reason for it? The White House is a focal point for all sorts of expressions of support and dissent from Americans. One of the most prominent to express himself on Vietnam recently is Hubert Humphrey, who was President Nixon's chief opponent in the last election. I think we have to realize that, uh, that the president is moving and he is trying. And I believe that he's made some progress. That's my view of it. I think he has made some progress. Did Mr. Humphrey, president? does this mean then that you support whatever the president has done in Vietnam up until now? I think what he's done has been good. Uh, he hopes he can do more. I hope he can too. I believe that uh, no man in this country is more desirous of uh, bringing about an acceptable and workable settlement in Vietnam than uh, the President of the United States. In 1963, President Kennedy, with his characteristic eloquence and clarity, said, we want to see a stable government there, carrying on the struggle to maintain its national independence. We believe strongly in that. We're not going to withdraw from that effort. In my opinion, for us to withdraw from that effort would mean a collapse not only of South Vietnam, but Southeast Asia. So we're going to stay there. President Eisenhower and President Johnson expressed the same conclusion during their terms of office. The future of peace, precipitate withdrawal, would be a disaster of immense magnitude. A nation cannot remain great if it betrays its allies and lets down 
its friends. Our defeat and humiliation in South Vietnam, without question, would promote recklessness in the councils of those great powers who have not yet abandoned their goals of world conquest. This would spark violence wherever our commitments help maintain the peace, in the Middle East, in Berlin, eventually even in the Western Hemisphere. Ultimately, this would cost more lives. These are Americans from almost all segments of the populace. They include people of all ages, occupations, religions, people from every level of the community, people from every region. The silent majority, many of them prefer to make their views known by writing a letter to a legislator rather than by taking part in a public demonstration either for or against a particular issue. Many of these people have been making their views known only in private conversations with relatives and friends, not in public forums. According to the Gallup poll, Although they agree overwhelmingly with President Nixon that demonstrations are harmful to the attainment of peace in Vietnam, most of them also agree with him that Americans do have a right to demonstrate. President Nixon, in his address of November 3rd, referred to demonstrators and others who want quick withdrawal of U.S. troops from Vietnam. I would be untrue to my oath of office if I allowed the policy of this nation to be dictated by the minority who hold that point of view and who try to impose it on the nation by mounting demonstrations in the street. For almost 200 years, the policy of this nation has been made under our Constitution by those leaders in the Congress and the White House elected by all the people. If a vocal minority however fervent its cause, prevails over reason and the will of the majority, this nation has no future as a free society. And now, I would like to address a word, if I may, to the young people of this nation who are particularly concerned, and I understand why they are concerned about this war. I respect your idealism. I share your concern for peace. I want peace as much as you do. Public reaction to the address was prompt, and some of those regarded as the silent majority broke their silence. The White House reported the president received thousands of telegrams, of which 90% reportedly endorsed his statement. Many other citizens communicated by mail. The White House says it received thousands of letters and postcards the vast majority supporting the president on Vietnam. In addition, many people telephoned with their support. No matter what the outcome of this controversy, demonstrations of support and opposition on many issues will continue to take place in Washington and throughout the land. What I have found, however, is that the loudest sound is not the only one that should be listened to. This is Dio Oyelude in Washington, D.C. <laughs> 